Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. Today we're going to be looking through this beautiful new book that I purchased recently and it's got all these amazing crocheted household plants, beautiful flora to make for your home. The author of this book or designer or creator is Emma Varnum. It is a UK publication so it is written in UK crochet terminology so please be mindful of that. And here it tells us that it's got 25 fun and easy projects. And how beautiful are all of those beautiful, beautiful succulents and other plants in here. I cannot wait to look through this book with you. Truth be told, I've only looked through it once and today we're going to have a proper look through it. I think I want to make each and every project in here. I wonder how many you're going to put on your crochet to do this. If you do already have this book, please let us know in the comments down below. And if you've made any of these um, wonderful, wonderful projects, please send them through to us. We'd love to ooh and ah over them. So I'm going to slide my iPad under here just because I'm going to need it to you know laying the little pages on now this is a soft or a paperback cover book it's not a hard cover but it is a beautiful beautiful book now i'm hoping i've positioned the lighting well so that you can see without too much glare so forgive me if it's not perfect now here we have a little bit about the author and look at that gorgeous plant there and it does have this little flap here which i like to use it as a bookmark in actual fact when i have a book so i wonder if you do the same now let's flip through the pages together so when we first open it up again it's got a few of the beautiful um, patterns that we'll be able to make from the book or the projects can you imagine having your home filled with these they just use need an a day what is it an occasional dusting and you won't have to worry about watering them ever again now here we have all the different projects that you can make with all like this is the contents obviously and it's got all the page numbers referring to the different plants then it has a crochet know-how it also has a tools and materials um, section crochet techniques how to finish off crocheted soil very very important some crocheted pots and some acknowledgements here we have a little introduction by emma herself wow look at all of those and then here it shows us the different plants and the page numbers so for example it says from left to right we've got the swiss cheese plant on page 80 then the inch plant the venus fly trap that's one that i want to make i remember back in the 80s i used to have one on my windowsill in my home and also an african violet and then here it's got the string of hearts and then on this page it says from the left we have a snake plant i think we've got one of those um, downstairs in my home from memory steve is the um gardener he has the green thumb in our house this one here is a snake plant is that that one i'm guessing a boston fern this one looks like a tiger ally, ally. Alloy, <laughs> aloe, like an aloe vera. I may have got them all wrong, but that's the names over there, guys. We will soon find out if I got them right or wrong. Oh my goodness, and look at these gorgeous ones here. So over here, there's an orchid, and it is a little bit glary, isn't it? So let's see how we go with the light. We've got a mountain cowslip, it tells us here, a snake plant. What else do we have? Oh, that's the Venus flytrap, a string of hearts. That's very pretty. A Chinese money tree and moonstones. Very, very pretty. And over here we have a poinsettia and a herringbone plant. Oh, my goodness. I have obviously heard of this one, but not that. I didn't realize that's the name. And the good thing about this is I'll be able to recognize plants when I see them now. Now, over here, it tells us that this is a spider plant. Look at the, like, the spiders on the end there. And then we have a crown cactus. I love cactus, so this will be awesome. Crown cactus, red cap cactus, a sweetheart plant, and moonstones again. Love all the pots too. So I imagine that you could buy a variety of pots or like myself, you know, I've got quite a few little terracotta pots. Maybe I could use those. And then it continues to show us the different plants. 
honestly when you first look at them you wouldn't even think that some of these were crocheted made with just some yarn and some stuffing amazing this is the fishbone cactus donkey's tail that one looks like a lot of loops i have yet to make something like that um this one here tells us i think it's fairy castle and then here we have a yucca now i have many many yuccas in my backyard you can either pot them straight into the ground or into plants and they grow like crazy i also know that some people like our friend thea hers flower but ours don't i wonder if there's a variety of them this one here is a coleus i think mountain cow slip chinese money plant and a curly jade plant that money plant keeps cropping up doesn't it <coughs> excuse me and here we have the african violet now this tells us that this is a pretty plant with vibrant flowers you can tell why i love it don't you all that purple and people often water it, um, these in the living version but you won't need to worry about that with a crochet alternative exactly what we were just saying and over here it does give you some notes what you're going to need to create the project and the size so this one here it says that the longest strand is approximately 12 centimeters or four and three quarter inches and i'm pretty sure it tells you yes the hook size 3.5 millimeters and i'm wondering yes it does tell you what plant pot approximately says two and three quarter inch or six centimeters in diameter so that is very very handy and then it shows us the pattern so how to make the leaves and the flower itself and even the soil and then how to make it up and then the next one we have here is the spider plant this one says this is one of the most popular house plants for two reasons it appears to be almost indestructible that is a very good one a good reason to have one and it has little offshoot babies that grow at the end of the long stems and here they are there and again this one tells us that it's 10 inches or 25 centimeters tall and 10 inches or 25 centimeters wide and it will and it tells us what size pot we need and hook of course and then we start with the pattern there's a top view of it and a side view now again i'm looking at and i like how it tells you how to make it up now i like to see different views of my crochet pieces and this seems to have quite a few views i know they're plants but that is still very very important this one is called the fish bone cactus and it tells us that this distinctive plant is often hung up high so its draping leaves can hang down well, how beautiful is that again we have an aerial view of the plant and the soil underneath and a nice side view this is beautiful yarn the way it changes color i think that they use uh you know specific yarn but we can use any yarn we wish now let me take this ipad away i don't think we need it as much now so this one here is the snake plant very very nice i wonder if you need something to keep it up or if it just sits up like that because of the crocheted stitch now of course as we said this is in uk terminology this this says this popular house plant has helpful air purifying properties and is sometimes known as the mother-in-law's tongue that's how i actually know it myself and what size will this one be so this one is going to be 10 inches or 25 centimeters long and one and three quarter or four centimeters in width oh that means every leaf is that size i was going to say i thought it'd be wider than that and there's the soil sticking out now you do need bamboo skewers it looks like to keep them up so that makes total sense now once again we have an aerial view and a side view very very nice this one here is the tiger aloe very very nice i'm guessing it's part of the aloe vera family maybe i'm not sure let me put this back there that's my marker <laughs> now also known as partridge breasted aloe the stripy leaf pattern of this south of african succulent gives its distinct identity beautiful this one is 12 centimeters or four and three quarters inches tall very very nice and again i'm loving this we have the aerial view and a nice side view there's the soil and how to make it up i love that 
Here we have, oh, I love this one. This is the fairy castle and it looks like a cactus. Oh my goodness, look at those little um, little flowers there. This cactus is named after its collection of small turret-like stems. The crocheted version uses small stitches of tinsel yarn. Okay, I have some tinsel yarn, that's awesome. Um, so the cactus, is approx the cactus is approximately three and a quarter inches in height or eight centimeters and two and a half inches or six centimeters in width. And again, we have a nice aerial view of the plant here and a side one with the soil and how to make it up. Very, very important. Now the writing isn't huge in this book, but it's big enough for me to see with my glasses on. So that makes me happy. <laughs> now here, this one's called Moonstones. The unusual egg shaped leaves give this succulent it's Latin name ovi, oviferum. I'm not very good with Latin words. It is. It's also. It also has the common name of sugar almonds. I love that. Now this one is four in four and a half inches or eleven centimeters in diameter. So from here to here, not circumference, diameter. And here we have once again a great aerial photo of it, and a beautiful one. And how to make it up next we have this gorgeous sweetheart plant oops oh my goodness I nearly fell off my chair sorry guys sweetheart plant and this one says a popular choice for gifting to a loved one oh isn't that gorgeous i absolutely love that idea um, this is slow growing. This is in real life. I hope it doesn't slow grow while we're crocheting it. And it says that this cactus is approximately three and a quarter inches or eight centimeters tall and three and a half or nine centimeters in width. And there's the soil. This one in actual fact would probably be very easy. It does say you need a piece of cardboard for internal support there. It just caught my eye. And here we go with a nice aerial view of it. <laughs> a side view. It is very thin and how to make it up. This one would probably be a very quick and easy make. Maybe a good starting point. This one is the donkey's tail. Now look at all those loops. I have never made anything with loops like this before. So this would be quite a challenge for me. It says, overflowing with thick reams of grape-like succulents, this plant has a luxurious look to it as it's often found hanging in bathrooms. Oh, well, there you go. I must like the moisture in there. This one says that the longest strand is approximately six inches or 15 centimeters long. And here we have an aerial view. It looks like a head of hair, doesn't it? And a side view. And I guess this would be nice if you had like a hanging pot and how to make it up. Another one that would be quite easy, I think, if you mastered the loops. Next, we have the curly jade plant. Another one that I think would be a simple make. This one says this is a very satisfying project to make. By increasing on every round in every row, you create a hyperbolic shape, which appears frequently in nature. Now, this plant is approximately four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters in diameter. And again, an aerial view. It actually looks like a very dark lettuce to me. <laughs> and there's another one there. Another nice photo with a nice pot and how to make it up. I love that. Oh, wow. This one is beautiful. Look at the colors. This one says, this glamorous plant features bright colors that look magnificent, recreated in vibrant yarn. Absolutely gorgeous. I can imagine there'd be a lot of color change in here, unless you found a yarn that had all those colors and maybe trimmed it in the green. So this one says that each leaf is approximately 16 and a half inches or 16 centimeters long. So this is quite a large plant and in width, four inches or 10 centimeters. And that's each leaf, guys. So that's pretty big. That would be a big plant. What size pot do you need for this one? Oh, only 12 centimeters or four and three quarter inches. Well, that is a big pot, really. And look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at the aerial view of that one. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? And I love the side view of it all as well and how to make it up. So this one would take quite a bit of yarn, I'd say. And look at this pretty thing here. So this is called the cen century plant. Oops, am I moving too much, guys? One of the giants of the plant world, growing around six to nine feet high or two to three meters. 
that is very, very tall. Obviously, we're not making it this big now. We'll be making one that is eight inches or 20 centimeters in diameter. And you only need a 10 centimeter or four inch pot for this, which means it's smaller than the previous one. Let's have a nice aerial view of it here and a nice side view. Oh, well, how pretty is that and how to make it up? I shouldn't be putting my arms in front. Sorry, guys. Now, this is a yucca. I should have taken a photo of my yuccas to show you, but that's okay. If I ever do make this, I'll take a photo of them side by side. This tells us that the yucca is making a comeback. Hey, it's always been in my backyard for about 15 years uh, due to its angular, good looks and exotic feel. Oh, the real live ones are actually quite sharp on the ends. You have to be all pointy. You have to be very careful. Now, the plant in its pot is approximately 12 inches. So there's this, uh, what's not the stem of it, I'll call it. Um, 12 inches or 30 centimetres tall from the base of the trunk. Sorry, that's the trunk to the top of the leaves. This is a very tall plant. And you do need some florist wire, it tells us, possibly to keep the leaves up. And you do need a four and three quarter inch or 12 centimetre pot. Very, very nice. Let's not skip any pages. And then we have an aerial view and a nice view of it there and how to make it up. Now, this one here is called the inch plant. This plant earned its Latin name due to its zebra-like stripes and can be found in many different colours. Oh, wow. Well, I really like this colour. It tells us that the leaves are approximately 10 inches or 25 centimetres long and in width, one and three quarter or four centimetres. Very, very nice. Oh, wow. Let's have a nice aerial view of it. And one on the side. I think this one wouldn't be very difficult to make either. Now, this is the one that I'm really wanting to make. It's called the Chinese Money Tree. This distinctive houseplant from southern China is very popular due, due to its UFO-like circular leaves. It's almost also sometimes known as a pancake plant because of the flat round leaves. I love that. So this plant is approximately three and a half inches or nine centimeters tall and it needs a 10 centimeter or four inch pot let's have a nice aerial view of it oh look at that that looks almost like a satellite dish does like satellite dishes in keeping of the ufo theme and how to make it up very very nice let's take that out of the way this one's very very pretty this one is the crown cactus yeah it does look like it's wearing a crown this neat little cactus produces brightly colored flowers which makes it very popular as a house plant i love it it's seven centimeters or two and three quarters inches tall very very nice and wide because it is a circle that looks like granny clusters doesn't it here is a nice aerial view of it there. And doesn't that look pretty up close, the plant, the flower? Once again, I don't think this would be a very hard one to make. Oh, this one looks like it's very detailed. This one is the chai, the Swiss cheese plant. The Swiss cheese plant is the king of the household. Look how big the leaves are. They can grow to enormous sizes and the real version as well as the crocheted alternative. So this plant is, in its pot is approximately 12 inches or 30 centimeters in height from the base of the stem to the top of the leaves. These leaves are huge. Now this has a very, very detailed um, pattern. Tells you how many of the larger leaves to make, how many of the smaller ones and how to make it up very 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 um long pattern compared to the others now this one is called the herringbone plant this is the oval leaves of the herringbone plant are spe spectacularly variegated with eye-catching red veins running down the center and branching out in a herringbone pattern i love that now the plant is in a pot approximately so the plant in its pot is approximately seven inches or 18 centimeters in height from the base all the way to the top of its leaves let's see if we get a nice 
aerial view. Oh, wow, look at that. Very, very pretty. I wonder if this is surface crochet. More than likely, I'm guessing. I can't imagine what else it would be. And here it's how to make it up. And here we have a poinsettia. Now, the glamorous red blooms of the poinsettia are actually leaves. Well, there you go. I always thought it was a flower. I'm not sure what you thought or if you knew better. Now, the plant is approximately 8 inches or 20 centimetres tall. It is very, very pretty. So, do we have a... We don't have an aerial view, but we do... Oh, yes, we do. An aerial and a side view. Very, very nice. And here we have a string of hearts. I think this is one that I would like to make as well. In actual fact, I don't really think that there's one that I wouldn't want to make so far. So this one says, this charming house plant has small heart shaped leaves with pears that grow along a trailing vine. Beautiful. The longest strands are approximately eight inches or 20 centimeters long. This one is very sweet. And here we have an aerial photo of it and a beautiful close-up as well. So this one wouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. It's like little heart shapes. And we've most of us have made little hearts, haven't we? And it looks like they're using two strands together at some stage to make the chain or the vine. This one's called a Boston fern. And this says, the Boston fern is an elegant favourite, also called the sword fern. Okay, so this plant is in its pot is approximately 6 inches or 15 centimetres tall and 8 inches or 20 centimetres wide. And here we have another aerial view and a side close-up view. Now, this looks almost like a curly Q lettuce to me. <laughs> Oh, well, I love this one, the Venus flytrap. This is a fascinating specimen, a rare example of a plant that is carnivorous in trapping insects and arachnids, is that spiders? Yes, and slowly consuming them. Wowzers, that is incredible. Now, this plant is approximately three and a half inches or nine centimetres tall. Wow, I love this plant. Look at that. This reminds me of something out of, um, is it Little Shop of Horrors? Look at that. Gorgeous. That's a, yep, that's going to, oh, that's one that I have to make. And this one, oh, this one is so pretty. This is the Moth Orchid. This is a gorgeous house plant and one that is readily available, but it can be tricky to retain the flowers. We don't have to worry about that, do we? In actual fact, I was gifted one of these not long ago, and that is very, very true. It looks like it has some sort of um, wire or something that keeps it up. Tap uh, Florist wire, that's what it is. This plant is approximately 11 inches or 27 centimetres tall. So it is very, very tall. The flowers look very, very pretty. Here is an aerial view of it and how to make it up. Very, very pretty up close, isn't it? Now this one is called a mountain cowslip. Striking colorful and graphic it is very very pretty this plant is valued so much that some people make a special shelf to show off their collection that is so awesome this plant is approximately five and a half inches or 14 centimeters tall it is very very pretty oops oh i hope i'm not moving too much guys now how beautiful is that up close stunning and there's a beautiful aerial shot of it too can you imagine your windowsill arranged with all, all of these or dotted around the house absolutely gorgeous now this one is the red cap cactus this cactus is popular due to its distinctive red cap it has the alternative common name of the lollipop cactus i love that this cactus is approximately four inches or 10 centimeters in height looks taller to me, but that's just an illusion. It's not as tall as I thought. Now, here we go here. Well, there's its aerial view, just the red top, and, of course, the soil and how to make it up, which is pretty awesome. And then we have some crochet know-how. All the information you'll need to create your beautiful crochet plants is explained here. It tells us, and it show, tells us... A, talks about crochet hooks yarn the stuffing the needles you'll need oh this is wonderful the support how to support the plants with stakes and cardboard 
and some wire and it even has some tips it says here instead of buying expensive stitch markers just cut a small amount of yarn we know that tip don't we guys and here it has a breed uh a the abbreviations what they actually stand for or mean and here he talks about uk and us differences in crochet terminology and the conversion of sizes as well which is great for our crochet hooks and then it has some techniques which you know um, if you're a very new crocheter it may or may not help you but i'm hoping that it would it talks to you about how you know holding your hook your yarn how to make a slip knot so it does go very like goes back to the basics a slip stitch a chain stitch so that's wonderful and then all the different types of stitches that you'll be using throughout the book to create those beautiful projects talks to you about working in spirals because you'll be using that for the soil and there's the yarn stitch marker that they were referring to how to make a magic ring which is great now, of course, we can also view these on YouTube if you need to. And then it shows us, tells us, ugh, talks about increasing, decreasing. And this is the one that I really need to get a lesson or two on, loop stitch. And then it shows us some more stitches, like a puff stitch, working in the back loop, crocheting a chain stitches around wire. That, that'll be very helpful. Then it talks about a spike stitch, a French knot and slip stitch surface decoration. We were right guys, that's what we'll be doing if we make this plant here. And then how to finish off, whip stitch, slip stitch seam, double crochet seams and weaving in your ends. Very, very important. After all that work, we wouldn't want it to unravel, would we? And then how to crochet your soil. Wow, that looks amazing, doesn't it? And then that fits straight into your pot. I have made some where you just, you know, crochet the top bit and then glue it into the pot. This is a very different way of doing it. So that's wonderful. And then it talks about crocheted pots. So if you want to crochet your pots rather than buy them, what a great alternative. It says here, you can source plant pots to display your finished projects, but you could also crochet a pot, which is wonderful. That is very, very good to know. And then just some acknowledgements. Oops. And lucky last, it tells us that this is a publication from the United Kingdom. I don't think it has a year on it though. No, it does not. But it is a beautiful book and here's some other books that you could also buy that you might be interested in very very nice so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this book as much as much as i enjoyed bringing it to you um you can purchase this as i did on amazon or any other place you buy your favorite books if you wish to add it to your collection or you might already have it in there as we said but thank you for coming you know and sharing a little bit of your time with me so i can share this book with you so I hope you're all keeping well and until I see you all very, very soon, take care everyone. Bye-bye for now.